Hey guys, Great101 here. Uh, I'm going to be going over what are the more popular tanks in Clan Wars. Uh, I'm going to give you a list of basically kind of like a tier 1, which is the, like the most commonly used, the tier 2, and the tier 3. Uh, I'll, I'm going to do most off basically like your heavy tanks, your heavy snipers, your heavy brawlers, and I will point out like the 2 to 3 tanks that are going to definitely be the number 1 most used to guarantee you a slot into Clan Wars. Uh, <laughs> I, a lot of these some of you guys may not agree with, but it's what, like I feel, is the most picked. Uh, this is, like I said, this is my opinion. Uh, some other callers have different opinions on certain tanks that they want, but this is what I feel is the most common. I'm not going to include clan reward tanks or premium tanks. I'm only going to include tanks that you need to unlock for the new players or the people who are just starting to get themselves into clan wars. Alright, so starting off this list, uh, I'm going to go ahead and point out the most three tanks that you're going to end up if you want, or I should say probably four, are these four right here. Your 277, your 5A, the Object 140, and the Object 430U. If you want to guarantee yourself a spot in Clan Wars, because these four are going to be the most commonly picked by any caller within the game. Uh, usually your mediums, your 140s, are uh, your, you know, for the sniper distance, and they at least got armor, so if you need to run into a brawl, so they're a good multi-purpose. Same thing with the 430U. While the 140 is the better sniper, the 430U has got the better armor. Now your 5A and 277, they're really, really close. There's minute things that are different. All right, so starting off the list, you got your heavy brawlers or your fast heavies, if you want to put them. Uh, usually these are the group tanks that are going to be in a, gr uh, in a group. They're going to be the ones that are going to be doing the push because they got the DPM, they've got it, they got the speed. They've got decent armor. Uh, they've got the HP pool to be able to push off a push in mass, or to be able to succeed in a massive push in a, with a whole bunch of group. Uh, the 277, while it has more of a curved hull, its armor is better towards an open field, meaning you got a better chance of bouncing if you head at somebody in an angle. While the 5A has got a V shaped hull, meaning that in order for its armor to be effective, you have to be pointing directly towards the enemy. Uh, your your 5A has got 7 degrees of gun depression while the 6.5 and the 277 so some people if callers are picky and they need a push to happen fast and need you get to a picky position quickly the 277 is going to be preferred tank and if there's places where there are a little bit more hills and stuff where the 277's gun won't be as effective because half a degrees of gun depression even one degree can make or break your tank <laughs> so the, five, the 5A with its five, uh, 7 degrees of gun depression can effectively do ridge lines way better than a 277 can. Um, now, some people may classify the IS-7 towards the tier 1 group here, but the reason I put the IS-7 towards the tier 2 group is because it doesn't have the armor, or it's got the armor, I'm sorry, it's got more armor than the other two. It doesn't have the speed, and it doesn't have the penetration. While its standard shell is APCR, meaning it distances, it can do a little bit better. Uh, your IS-7 is more likely to be a lone tank to hold a flank as long as they can, because it's got the armor, it has got the the uh, ability to you know snipe towards a longer distance if he's got a scout to help support him, uh, he's it's it can still perform the same roles to two seven seven or five a. So if you don't have that, you can still get in with the is seven, but it's not as effective and it can't perform the role of the other two as successful. Uh, the one thirteen, it you could put that as a tier two, but I just the reason I, I like I said I put the tier is seven alone because it's it's kind of its own thing. It's old school. It's well armored, but the 113 has got meh armor. It's uh, it's worse than the 430U's frontal armor, but its side armor is better, meaning it can side scrape a little bit better. Uh, it, it it can do the same roles of 5A or 277. So if you've already got these three unlocked, 113 is your next target. Uh, it's seven degrees of gun depression, but only on the sides. It doesn't have enough on the front. It's so long that if you go to poke over a ridge, you expose yourself for that seven degrees because you have to point, turn your gun sideways. And the IS-4, it's on this list just simply because I had nowhere to put it. This tank is bad. It is garbage. It should be probably a lot, one of the last tanks in the game you get until Wargaming maybe addresses it, and we'll see what they do with it. Maybe they'll make it better. Maybe it might be a meta. Maybe it won't. But at the moment, it has got garbage gun handling, not the greatest DPM, its armor is completely trash, these armors up on the top have actually, they're better because they're slopes, so you have a chance of bouncing while this is just flat and mushy. Now heading on to your medium brawlers, uh, or medium snipers for instance. You've got your 140 and the 432 at the top. Now the, the big difference between these is your 140's got the better DPM and it's got the better accuracy, it's also got, uh, it's sim they pretty much have similar speeds, it's slightly faster, 
But the 430U has got your armor, meaning you can make a mistake and probably most likely come out alive versus the 140. And your 430U is also, it weighs more, meaning you can get up and you can get a little bit more aggressive and push tanks around just a little bit and punish a light, for instance, on a ram. Uh, the next best target is a 62A. So after you have the 140 and the 430U, your next target should be the 62A. Uh, it's, it's basically, it's the same thing as the 140 with more armor, but one degree less gun depression. Meaning it has, uh, I think it's got five and the 140 has got, I believe, six degrees of gun depression. So that one degree can make or break your game. That's why the 140 is the more commonly used tank, while its armor isn't as good, but they can means, but that means the 140 can work way better than the 62A can. Now, if we continue on your medium brawlers or snipers, you have got the 30B, the 121, and the STB1. Even this is including the new siege mode mechanic that Wargaming is adding to it, because there's not enough armor on these three tanks here to be able to compete and do a brawl. Uh, while they are decent at sniping and they're decent, except for the 121, they're decent, kind of a little bit of a long range. Oh, and the STB is garbage too. It, uh, they're the last tank. So if you have these three locked in your clan wars, these are the three here, one of the three that can be picked uh, just to replace. I myself prefer the 30B because of its uh, its its 490 alpha or 390 alpha. I'm sorry, and it, it's got the, the speed to be able to relocate quickly. The STB, even with the siege mode that Wargaming has added to it, its accuracy is still garbage. It has hardly any armor, and it's slow. It is massively slow compared to the others with the engine power. And the 121, uh, War <laughs> Wargaming just seems to want to neglect that tank. I don't know why. It's just, it's the probably the worst. It's probably even being a tier 4. It's another one you'd like the last one you want to go for. Now head into your uh, city map heavies. These are your super heavies, your big powerhouses. Uh, you can put the 705A in the same category, probably right here next to the, uh, the Panzer 7. actually is probably where it would be. It's used, but it's barely used. You hardly ever see it, mainly due to the lack of penetration accuracy. But anyways, moving on. The mouse is the number one. It's the king. It's it's You're going to be, uh, in city maps, it's going to be the most commonly picked, especially with the Type 5 nerf that it recently got. The, uh, Type 5, you know, the Type 5 is still relevant. It does have, if you use the second gun, the AP gun, you still have got uh, decent penetration, while not quite good as the E100, but you have got a little bit better DPM, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And you have got at least some penetration to be able to uh, compete with certain tanks. So if your mouse is locked, your Type 5 Heavy, or your E100, they're basically the same. You can pick each, either one. One's better at the side scraping, one's got a little bit more maneuverability. It, it, it's your choice on which of the two to go for. While I myself would prefer an E100 because of the penetration increase compared to the Type 5, the Type 5 itself is still compatible. Or compatible, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't want 15 mouses just because you need at least something to go back and get some, some kind of speed for a little bit of a flank. So at least having a few Type 5s or a few E100s work. Uh, the worst is the Panzer 7. You don't want to... Uh, it in it's fun in pubs. I love the Panzer 7 in pubs, it, but it needs a hull armor buff increase and maybe a slight gun mantlet increase in order for it to me to be effective, and maybe even a DPM increase. It's just it lacks DPM to keep up with the other heavies. It has less than all of these, and its armor layout is, while it can be trollish, it, the lower plate can be printed with premium. Uh, it... <sighs> It, some premium rounds will bounce off. It's like a 50-50 chance. There's like, out of the 10 shells, 5 shells are going to go through it, so why would you risk it? Uh, now, next for your side scraping heavies. I have the 113 and the 705A. Now, the reason I have the 113 is because the difference between these two tanks is the gun and the uh, rear turret. While the, the 113 is so long, it sets so far back, it feels like you have a rear turreted tank. But... It doesn't have the, the side scraping armor that the 705 does or the big heavy hitting gun. But it's got the DPM increase, meaning if you need it to hold a flank and keep tracking enemies out in the open to punish them, the 113 is your better choice. But if you're holding the flank at a long distance and you want to do 700 damage, meaning they're going to take 14 or maybe even 3 shots to get to you, the 705A is your better choice. While its penetration premium is lacked compared to the 113, you got to make sure you aim because its aim is also trash. Make sure you aim your target. Make sure you hit. Uh, it does 6... 50 alpha rather than 750 compared to others, so it's going to similar to the 268 version 4. Uh, the Panzer 7, <laughs> technically it can't side scrape. Its side hull is weak, but you can poke its turret around because it is rear to sneak in a quick snapshot. Uh, 430U, you could uh, because its armor isn't as on the side is not as good as the 113. The 430U is really towards after they push around. It's a better than the 113. And your worst is the E50M. This thing is big. It's monstrous. Its gun is all right. Um, 
it's just it's it's not really commonly used uh, usually if your other mediums actually it could actually be in the third tier over here with the uh, medium brawlers the 50 or the 50m can but it's just not used that often uh, now your ridgeline heavies it the, with a buff to the kronwagen the kronwagen is 100% it's 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 back. It's meta. It's got a DP increase. It's got three shells, meaning it's tied with the super conk. If someone wants, it can run two super conks and one cron. It can work, but the super conk is going to be your most common choice, and most commonly picked over the cron wagon. So if you want to guarantee yourself into a little bit more of a hold down, pick the super conk over the cron. But the cron, it's still relevant. If you've got it, it's definitely worth going for. It is a really good ridgeline tank. Uh, next, uh, I believe this is what I believe, guys. A lot of people will be against this due to the lack of side armor that the M AMX M4 has got. Uh, and but I, it's this thing is a beast when it's pointed directly towards its enemy. It has got a similar gun to the Super Conk, or you can pick the less penetration but higher Alpha 560 gun, which is the gun that I think Wargaming should make mandatory on this tank and the only no option compared to the Super Conk. This is my opinion, because and increase its penetration because I want it to be different from the Super Conk. Also increase the side armor if Wargaming could. Maybe it'd make it a more competitive tank. But uh, this tank, to me, is that these two are locked. The M4 can at least kind of replace it. Uh, the, the 60 TP, it's it's decent gun depression. Uh, it's I believe it's 8. It's not Same thing with the E5, it's 8. They are not your number one pick. While the 60 TP has got a nice big alpha gun, its accuracy and its DPM is a little bit lower. The E5 could even be at a tier 4. Uh, it, <laughs> it's got crap captain's hatch that is up at the top and exposes. It's only got 8 degrees of gun depression. Its DPM is way worse than the super conk. The only thing it's got better is the hull armor and the side armor compared to the super conk. That is it. But nothing else is better. This tank is trash. It's not worth going for until Wargaming addresses it. Do not go for the E5. Uh, 60 TP you'd be better off going for rather than the E5. Um, now, for your Ridgeline mediums, your uh, Centurion Action X, your Patent, and your Udes 15, 16 are going to be tied for the top. Your uh, Udes 16, 15, while its armor isn't the greatest, it's slope, meaning that higher, like lower medium tanks that you're most likely going to run into, or even a 277, the shells can bounce off. Uh, like, but tanks, for instance, like your E3, uh, your FV183, or Jagdpanzer E100, they're going to go through you like butter. There's really nothing you can really do to stop it. Uh, you can even bounce a Sturve in a Udez, or a fellow Udez, because of its armor sloped. The Patton, it's the king of snapshots. It can work the ridge lines while it has got a nice rounded turret. Sometimes its mantlet can be pinned, similar to the Action X. The Action X's armor is better than the Patton's, but the Patton's gun handling is better than the Action X, meaning it's dependent on what you want. Uh, the caller may be specific about it, but they're pretty much almost the same thing, and they usually won't be too picky if you say, hey, I have an Action X over a Patton. They'll probably say, all right, we'll just bring it. It's good. Uh, but the UDES 1516 is starting to show its 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 prime. It's it's actually becoming really nice and competitive. Now the uh, second is your 30B and your STB1. Uh, now the STB1, like I said, its armor still isn't great. You can still be one shotted by Artie. That's the same thing with the 30B. That's why it's not that commonly picked. You Artie can one shot you, and usually the maps you take your mediums on and you're open where there's definitely going to be an Artie in the game. Uh, the 30Bs also in the STB have also got captain's hatches that are gigantic. Uh, the 30Bs is double the size of the STB, and the STB is still huge. Uh, the noob stage mechanic and the DPM increase does not do justice to it wargaming. It still needs an armor increase for this tank to be able to brawl in the front. Its poor gun handling compared to the 30B means the 30B is actually in a similar state as the STB because it's got better gun handling. Now your your last and final ridgeline medium is the Leo 1 and the uh, Progetto 65. Now the Progetto 65 is unique. Some callers unique. Some callers will prefer this Progetto over any of these. They'll put it this in probably the second tier or even towards the top. But the Progetto doesn't have the DPM that some. All it is is the Progetto to me is an opportunity tank. If it sees a tank going across the field, it can get maybe two to three shots off. But then it's got a long wait, and it it's an opportunity tank. It cannot really successfully do a push and it cannot successfully defend. Uh, it's an opportunistic tank. The Leo 1, now with its recent buffs and its recent increase, uh, on ridge lines it has no armor. It Anytime it gets hit still, it still pretty much gets ammo racked. Uh, that's something that Wargaming could address, but it's to punish you for not doing your sniper positions. Uh, they, they, Wargaming wants you to be a sniper in it, so uh, it's, it's the 
third, like I said, it's it's in the third tier the Leo is, just simply because it has no armor and how often it gets ammo racked. Now your heavy autoloaders, all three heavy autoloaders, 57 heavy, 50 being Kronwagen, are equally important. 57 heavy being your more uh, your more DPM tank. Uh, it's definitely better on flat grounds than the Kronwagen is, because uh, it's got a little bit, it's got better hull armor, meaning, and it can punish because it shoots heat. Uh, it can punish super heavies, meaning on Himmelsdorf, Insk, the 57 heavy can shred. Now your 50B is the tank used on your more open map, since for instance, Portorovka, uh, Steps, Merovanka, Westfield, the 50B simply because of its relocation speed. Now your Kronwagen, while it's faster than the 57 heavy, it's, it's not as fast as the 50B. The Kronwagen did get an engine power increase, uh, so it is faster going up hills. It's not quite, like I said, it's not quite as good. But it, it's got three shells in its clip, and it's got the tons of turret armor, and it's got 12 degrees of gun depression. So on ridge lines, your auto, your Kronwagen can roll. The 50B is your speed, and your 57 heavy is your DPM. Now going on to your auto loader mediums, you got your bat chat and your TVP. Those two are the kings. Uh, not many people use the TVP just simply because it's. Not many people go for it. If the line is it's a pain to grind the whole line is until you get to the tier 9 the 9 and 10 are totally worth it though but the, the TVP it's a bat chat killer it can definitely shred a bat chat apart it's got 1.5 second re, uh, interclip reload it's got better accuracy in the bat chat but its clip potential is nowhere near as good as the bat chats while the TVP's is about 1200 clip potential the bat chat is almost double because while the TVP carries on, carries 100 millimeter doing about 3 I think it's an odd 360 alpha, maybe 340, I can't remember. Uh, but it does an odd amount of damage, but the bat chat has got a 105 dealing a nice, lovely 390 alpha with five shells, basically about 2,200 clip potential. The Pregetto, like I said, it's an opportunistic tank. It can't do much. Uh, it, it can it can take and punish enemies who go out into the open, but it's an opportunistic tank. Now moving on to your snipers. Your king, your number one, your sturve. Your alt sturve is always going to be picked for a TD that's going to be in the back for the sniper because it's got excellent camo value. It's got really good DPM. It's got APCR shells to mean he can snipe at distance at fast tanks really well. And it's got the new uh, that siege mode mechanic that increases its uh, it's it's it can it's got trollish armor. It can bounce. It's got a heat shield that stops heat shells coming for it. The tank is really really good. Uh, now, for your next snipers, I have moved to the second tier, the K91, the Badger, and the Grill 15. Uh, the Badger, while it can hold a ridge, its camo value is really low. Uh, it's it's dependent on where you're going to go. Your Badger is probably going to be picked over the K91 or the Grill if you're sniping from your base because it doesn't have to move very much. The Badger's slow. It, it, it can't get to key positions. But your K91 can. Your K91's got 7 degrees of gun depression on the sides, but not in front of the hull. And it's got excellent DPM and a excellent sniping. Some people will even pick the Grill 15 over the K91 just because it's got that TD light camo, which in a certain way, in some instances, whenever you fire, it's better than the K91's, but the K91's got such a low profile. They're basically the same. But the Grill has got a 750 alpha damage gun with really good accuracy. And it's got really good relocation speed, similar to the K91s. Um, so it's really dependent on what your caller wants. I personally think that the Sturve is number one, and I would put the Grill over the Badger or the K91 for relocation speeds. But if I need to defend my base and there's at least a spot that the Badger can hold haul down on, I may pick the Badger So if it doesn't have to move far. Uh, now your third tier of snipers is your 268 and your Leo 1. Uh, some people would move the Fosh B up to the third tier, but the reason I put the Fosh B is because it has a clip and it can't really defend very well, and it's uh, you're sitting vacant for about 34 seconds after you unload, but it will punish the enemies, and if you miss your shots, you're hurting. The Leo 1 with the recent buffs, it is definitely, it's definitely a decent sniper, uh, but it's still, it's got no armor, no chance of bouncing whatsoever, it's... DPM isn't great compared to the K91, meaning the K91 can shred whenever tanks are pushing a lot better than the Leo 1 can. The Leo, to me, seems uh, similar to the Brigetto. It's an opportunistic tank. When presented the opportunity, it can shred, but it's very rare that those opportunities are given in Clan Wars. Uh, now, your heavy brawls. These are your heavy, uh, your push TDs or your heavy flank TDs that you want nobody to get past because it's hard to pin. Uh, they can hold positions very well. Uh, the number one is the E3, 
and Diversion 4, and the Badger. Uh, your Heavy Brawls TDs can also consist of pushing as well, pushing flanks with those. It's front line tank. It is the front line armor. You're either going to stop the enemy or you're planning on pushing through them. Your E3, because it's got credible, like, it's, it's armor is great. It's slow. So it's more of a defensive tank rather than a aggressor. Uh, it's got, uh, it's got horrible hull armor, and it's got an impenetrable almost captain's hatch. It's like a 50% chance if you have got a uh, loading premium with higher caliber or higher penetration guns. Uh, the Badger, it's got incredible DPM, meaning it can hold a flank on open fields and just keep shredding. And you, you can rack up your HP really quickly because it's the highest DPM in the game. E4 is really, really good on corners. It has got that turret, meaning it can work those corners like a boss. It is probably your best for working corners as far as TD's concerns. And your version 4 is the best aggressor for pushing flanks. It has got trollish armor. Its captain's hatch is hard to hit whenever it's moving. It's almost impenetrable when you're face-hugging it. Its gun, man its gun mantle and its superstructure is impossible almost to pretty much pin. Uh, now your uh, Jagdpanzer E100. Some callers will call this tank for a certain uh, certain positions because they want to punish the enemy for poking around and put a fear into them because nobody wants to get hit for a thousand. So they're going to halt and they're <laughs> they're going to stop and they're going to think about their decision. Do we want to go? Meaning it gives you a little bit more opportunity and more time to push a certain flank. Uh, the Jagdpanzer E100. It is still relevant. It is still good. It's a behemoth. It's got the armor. It has got a high alpha down gun. It, is, it can still be used, but it won't be used as commonly as the other four. Uh, now, your three worst heavy brawl TDs are going to be your Fosh B. I mean, the Fosh B, you could probably put that the same part as the Agpanzer E100. Some callers do use it quite often because they want to punish that enemy with the surprise attack of that burst clip, basically taking out pretty much one gun. Uh, the WZ-113 GFT, it's trash, it's garbage, it shouldn't be. Same thing with the 268, it's trash, it's garbage. Now moving on to your light tanks. There are three light tanks you definitely want to have. T100, AMX13105, and EBR105. EBR105 is the most commonly used now with its new meta. It's, uh, it has got the speed. There's definitely going to be an EBR on any open map. It's got the speed to be able to relocate quickly. The 13105 has got the clip, and the, AM, uh, the T100's got the, uh, the camo value and the speed to be able to take stuff out. The 13, these three have actually got the three best camo values in the game. The second best is the WebEZ-132 or the Bat Chat. Um, the Bat Chat, I would prefer over having to take these three just because it's got the clip. It doesn't have the good as camo as the others, but the Bat Chat is still irrelevant. It's still a scout. It can still it can still do damage. Um, these Sheridan, RHM, don't go for them. They're pretty much almost useless. They're really good for maybe one or two things. They're they're just you're you're better off going for these three. Uh, now going for your Artie Scum. It's your <laughs> GWE100 and Conqueror GC are going to be the two most common. Uh, your GWE100 is going to be used the most because it has now got the range. So with the new recent nerf to the Conk GC, they nerfed its arc and they nerfed its range. It's worse range than what it was before. So you also have to judge way ahead of time from what you used to in order to successfully hit. So the GWE100 is the number one. Uh, it's the king. Uh, the Conk GC is probably your second one you might want to go for. Uh, the T92 and the M53. I put those. And the M53 is the only tier nine in this list of all this of all the tanks. Uh, the re I feel that the M53 with its high speed, its really good relocation speed, and its turret traverse is crazy. Meaning you don't have to, you don't get punished for turning your turret. Uh, you get punished for your hull moving, but you don't get punished for your turret rotation as as good as you would, for instance, having to move and wait for that, aim, that long aim time of the T92. The M53 has at least got a decent enough gun to have at least decent enough splash to stun a whole group of enemies and slow them down. The Bat Chat 155-58, it's autoloader, it's, and it, it, the size of its gun, it's garbage, it's not worth it, it's totally useless. 261 is alright, it's better than the Bat Chat 55-58. But it's got terrible shell arc, and it doesn't carry many shells, but it's got excellent relocation speed. So if you're a caller and you plan on having an arty in a tricky spot and you need something to get out, your two better tank choices are the M53 and the 261, so they can relocate and pin and hit the enemy from a different direction. Now, the one I put in the Misfit is the FV4005. It is unique. It is not like any other tank in the game. It and the 183 are both two different, different tanks. Uh, the recent nerf to the FV405, they re uh, they nerfed its backup speed to eight, and they made it have horrible gun handling. This 
like the Pergetto, but it's a more than the Pergetto, an opportunistic tank. You need to slowly find your way around the battlefield, slowly find a hole, go in, punish the enemy for either 1,200, or if it's a medium tank, punish them for their full HP, the one shot, punish them. It's an only an opportunistic tank. It's a fun tank to go in random battles. I do encourage you guys to at least go for the FE405. It's a fun tank. The gun is hilarious. It's not as good as it used to be, though, but it's still a relevant tank. I hope you guys find this video helpful, and it, it at least helps you with your uh, the choices on the uh, what tanks are meta and what tanks are most commonly used. Uh, remember, the 277 and 5A are the two tanks that can guarantee you the most in the Clan Wars, and the, pretty much the first ones you want to go for. Next is the Object 140 and the 430U. So those four tanks are the most commonly used and most commonly picked between almost any caller. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, guys. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you get any alerts anytime I upload a video. Um, I, I apologize, this video took a lot longer than I expected. Uh, there's just so many tanks that Wargaming has added through the years. And do remember that this list is subject to change all the time. Wargaming is constantly updating and changing tanks or buffing and nerfing. So this list can change. And I'll see you guys in the Clan Wars Battlefield.